హలో ఎవ్రీ వన్ వెల్కమ్ టు మై ఛానల్ సో ఇన్ టుడేస్ క్లాస్ వీ గోన డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ఎ టెక్నిక్ విచ్ ఈజ్ రిలేటెడ్ టు ద ప్లాస్మా మెంబ్రెయిన్ స్ట్రక్చర్ దట్ ఈస్ ఎఫ్ఆర్ఏపి ఎఫ్ఆర్ఏపి మీన్స్ ఫ్లూరోసెన్స్ రికవరీ ఆఫ్టర్ ఫోటో బ్లీచింగ్ సో బిఫోర్ గోయింగ్ ఇన్ టు టాపిక్ లెట్ వీ డిస్కస్ ఫస్ట్ అబౌట్ ప్లాస్మా మెంబ్రెయిన్ జనరల్ స్ట్రక్చర్ ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ వీ విల్ గో ఇన్ టు ది టాపిక్ అలాంగ్ విత్ ద ప్రీవియస్ ఇయర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఆల్సో so in the fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane so we know that every cell will have a limitation so that within that limitation only it can do all its functions uh, the organelles also present within that only so every cell whether it is a prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell which uh, compulsorily have a plasma membrane or a cell membrane so this cell membrane or plasma membrane exhibit the fluid mosaic model fluid mosaic model means if you see in this picture the lipids are arranged in a bilayer the lipids are arranged in a bilayer and you can see some of the type of proteins are present some proteins which are inserted and spanned uh, along the uh, phospholipid bilayer are called membrane spanning proteins or we can say it has integral membrane proteins so if you see right side that orange color and blue color integral membrane proteins are there so orange color integral membrane protein which also attached to the peripheral membrane protein this peripheral membrane protein again attached the cytoskeleton we know that cytoskeleton is very important for the maintenance of structural stability of a cell okay and if you see this blue color uh, peripheral protein uh, sorry blue color integral protein this blue color integral protein does not have any attachment so the mage uh, if you see this model why we are saying fluid mosaic model means so when we observe under the microscope the lipid bilayer on the cell membrane look like a ocean or a sea and these uh, integral proteins or the proteins which are present on the cell membrane look like a icebergs okay so that's why which, uh, the model is called fluid mosaic model so the key element for this model is the lateral movement or a diffusion of integral proteins unless which attached to the other cellular components so you have to remember that the proteins as well as lipids which are present in the plasma membrane can move laterally that means side by side okay they can move laterally side by side uh, very easily uh, along the uh, cell uh, life span okay but there are some limitations so if you for example if we see integral proteins all integral proteins will not move because uh, already i show exam i showed example here here the orange color integral protein attached to the peripheral membrane protein and it is attached to the cytoskeleton so these kind of integral membrane proteins will not move always because if they are moving it will disturb the other functions of your cell as well as it will disrupt the Uh, structural integrity of a cell also so most of the integral proteins which does not attach it to the any other protein can easily move from one side to other side that is the lateral movement or we can say diffusion also so the flip flop movement that means uh, the reversion of uh, exoplasmic side to the cytoplasmic side and or the cytoplasmic side to the exoplasmic side is impossible for the proteins but it is possible to the lipids due to the uh, presence of an enzymes called flip pages so let we discuss the topic uh, briefly in the plasma membrane structure so the rates of diffusion of proteins in membranes can be determined from measurements of frap so with the help of frap technique we can measure the rate of diffusion of proteins that means with uh, how much speed the proteins are moving within the cell membrane uh, we can uh, easily analyze through this frap technique so remember that fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching so in uh, so we need to use a fluorescence molecule fluorescence molecules usually emit the colors so that we can easily observe under the fluorescence microscope so let we see the experiment so when we see the experiment so first we will add a or attach a specific fluorophore 
here the fluoroformins the compound which emit the light with the different colors and we can observe easily under the fluorescence microscope so first we will take all the membrane components that means all the membrane proteins you you have attached with the fluorophore or you have tagged with the fluorophore now you can observe under the microscope all the proteins look uh, with the same color and all the proteins emit the color okay but one thing while doing this experiment you have to immobilize the cell if you don't immobilize the cell if the cell is moving continuously within the culture or within the uh, uh, petri dish or the thing where you have taken it is impossible to detect the lateral movement or the diffusion of a proteins or lipids okay so either you have to immobilize the cell or you have to prepare a artificial membrane same as like plasma membrane to observe this lateral movement so in within this immobilized cell or uh, in an artificial membrane you have to attach the fluorophore to the all the integral membrane proteins without leaving any one you have to attach the attach to the all the integral membrane proteins okay sometimes we will call it as membrane spanning proteins also so don't confuse with that now what you want to do so you have entirely Uh, flu uh, tagged that uh, fluorophore to the all the integral membrane proteins just to take an area of a plasma membrane and bleach that area with intense laser pulse that means you are removing the fluorophore from one specific area of plasma membrane what will happen so all entire Uh, plasma membrane or cell membrane integral proteins will have the will emit the color except that bleached region bleached region means it lost the color and it look like white okay so very small area that means approximately you have to destroy or bleach the 3 micrometer square area that is very less okay so we will see in the diagram clearly and now observe the rate at which the bleached area recovers its fluorescence as monitored by fluorescence microscopy so after bleaching you have to observe under the microscope if really proteins are not moving laterally what will happen even after 3 minutes after 5 minutes after 10 minutes also you can see the same structure that means the bleached area will look like that only and other proteins with uh, Uh, color emission that means other integral proteins will exhibit the uh, or will emit the color okay now if really proteins are moving what will happen the bleach if the uh, proteins are laterally moving automatically other proteins of uh, other uh, uh, integral proteins from other regions will slowly move so while moving it will cover the bleached region it will cover the bleached region and bleached region will become the unbleached region so after some time we can observe uh, uh, fluorophore emitting uh, compounds within that bleached region if really proteins are moving let we see these things under the uh, diagram which indicates the rate at which unbleached and bleached fluorophore labeled molecules laterally diffuse into and out of the bleached area the same thing we have seen now okay so which indicating that if uh, really the proteins are moving the bleached area will replaced by the unbleached area so you can see here in this diagram first see the left one so now with the help of uh, laser beam that is in red color arrow you have destroyed the one place first you have tagged entire cell entire cell membrane with the green color uh, emitting fluorophore okay now now you have destroyed some region of the plasma membrane okay so after some time you can observe the recovery slowly uh, the proteins from the bleached region is moving to the other region and uh, from other region the fluorophore containing proteins or fluorophore tagged proteins are slowly moving uh, into the bleached region okay so if you see after uh, some time the fluorophore intensity in the bleached region will become normal you can see with that third diagram that is graph so you have first you have bleached so the fluorescence color intensity fallen down and slowly after some time the recovery happened and the bleached region 
become the unbleached region that is a fluorophore emitting region so the same thing you can observe here also so see here uh, there is a membrane protein uh, you have labeled them all the membrane integral proteins you can see integral membrane proteins that spanning the entire plasma membrane that here shown in this picture so uh, you have tagged the entire fluorescent uh, entire integral proteins with the fluorescent reagent or the fluorophore so now you have bleached a area that means with the help of laser uh, intense light you have bleached some of the area you can see some area that a bleached area lost the color and after some time you can see the fluorescence recovery if you particularly targeted that bleached area you can observe the bleached area recovered 50 percent already so we can't say it will uh, reach 100 percent but almost it reached the 50 percent okay so the cell continuously uh, the integral proteins continuously move so we can't observe the 100 percent uh, unbleached area because we have already bleached some of the proteins okay so let me see deeply about this FREP studies with fluorescence labeled phospholipids have shown that in fibroblast plasma membranes all the phospholipids are freely mobile over distances of about 0.5 micrometer but most cannot diffuse over much longer distances so with the help of FREP technique so we have labeled the phospholipids also within the fibroblast plasma membranes they observed that the phospholipids within the plasma membrane not only proteins here the phospholipids also can move the phospholipids within the plasma membrane can move up to the 0.5 micrometers why it can't able to diffuse or why it can't able to move further means there is a impossibility that the proteins which are inserted within the regions of within the plasma membrane so the proteins will not allow the lipids to uh, transport more or lipids to move uh, freely more okay so these findings suggest that protein rich rich regions of the plasma membrane about one micrometer in diameter separate lipid rich regions containing the bulk of the plasma membrane phospholipids for example if you see some number of lipids are there after that one integral protein will be there after that some number of lipids will be there after that one integral protein will be there so like this the phospholipids and the protein rich regions are separated by each other and these protein proteins can easily move around the cell membrane but lipids can only move up to particular distance because these proteins are uh, stopping the phospholipids to move uh, uh, further side because the phospholipid cannot able to jump from the one protein channel to the other protein channel or one uh, integral protein to the other uh, lipid rich region or other uh, integral protein uh, mem membrane protein uh, region okay so phospholipids are free to diffuse within such regions but not from one lipid rich region to adjacent one because if you see one lipid re rich region another lipid rich region there is a presence of some integral membrane proteins that will not allow lipids to jump okay so within that regions only one uh, within one lipid rich region only the lipids can move from one side one side to other side that's it furthermore the rate of lateral diffusion of lipids in the plasma membrane is nearly an order of magnitude slower than in pure phospholipid bilayers diffusion constants of 10 power minus 8 centimeter square per second and 10 power minus 7 centimer centimeter square per second are characteristic of the plasma membrane and a pure phospholipid bilayer respectively so if you see the magnitude that means how with how much uh, time it is moving a protein or if a lipid is moving that is different from the natural plasma membranes as well as artificial membranes so natural plasma membrane diffusion constant is 10 power minus 8 centimeter square per second as well as uh, pure phospholipid bilayers that is artificial bilayers uh, 
डिफ्यूजन कॉन्स्टेंट टेन पावर माइनस सेवन सेंटीमीटर स्क्वेयर पर सेकेंड ओके दिस डिफरेंस सजेस्ट दट लिपिड्स मे बी टाइटली बट नॉट इिवर्सबली बाउंड टू सेट इन इंटीग्रल प्रोटीन्स इन सम मेम्रेन्स सो लिपिड्स ऑलवेज इफ यू सी इंटीग्रल प्रोटीन्स इन इंटीग्रल प्रो इफ ए इंटीग्रल मेम्रेन प्रोटीन वॉन्ट टू प्रेजेंट इन वन सर्च रीजन इट शुड इंटरैक्ट विद द हाइड्रोफोबिक टेल्स ऑफ द फॉस्फोलिपिड्स राइट द हाइड्रोफोबिक अमाइनो एसिड्स विल इंटरैक्ट विद द हाइड्रोफोबिक टेल्स ऑफ द फॉस्फोलिपिड्स सो दिस इंटरैक्शन इज नॉट इिवर्सबल ओके इट इज इिवर्स इट इज रिवर्सबल बिकॉज द लिपिड्स ऑल्सो मूविंग एज वेल एज प्रोटीन्स ऑल्सो मूविंग सो द प्रोटीन्स ऑल्सो विल सेपरेट सो वाइल सेपरेटिंग फ्रॉम वन लिपिड रीजन टू द अदर लिपिड रीजन इट विल डिटैच इट अटैचमेंट विद द फॉस्फोलिपिड टाइल्स एंड I mean uh, the hydrophobic tiles, and it will go to the other region, and uh, the, uh, after reaching to that region, there it will attach. Uh, it will form the interactions with the hydrophobic tiles. Let me see those kind of topics uh, clearly in the plasma membrane structure. See FRAP experiment with human hepatoma cells treated with a fluorescent antibody specific. For the Asialo glycoprotein receptor protein, the finding that 50% of the fluorescence returned to the bleached area indicates that 50% of the receptor molecules in the illuminated membrane patch were mobile and 50% were immobile. Because the rate of fluorescence recovery is proportional to the rate at which labeled molecules move into the bleached region. so just to see the uh, uh, graph here there is a x axis and y axis in the x axis they have mentioned the time in the y axis they have mentioned the fluorescence intensity so before bleaching the fluorescence uh, intensity may be nearly 3000 units okay near approximately 3000 not exactly okay and if you see after bleaching slowly the fluorescence intensity fallen down to approximately 1000 units and uh, after some time that means after more than the 50, 150 seconds that means uh, at the time of nearly 3 minutes 2 and 1/2 minutes so after the 2 and 1/2 minutes only 50% receptors i mean uh, after the bleaching that unbleached a, 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 uh, unbleached receptors from other regions of the cell membrane moved only 50% that means here the 50% of the receptors are the immobile that means they don't move and 50% only move so that means we need to understand all the lipids will not move from the one region to other region always only some of the lipids or some of the proteins only move all the integral proteins will not move so it is too difficult to us to achieve the 100% unbleached proteins in the bleached region so that means after the bleaching it is difficult to achieve the 100% unbleached proteins to replace this bleached area proteins so they have done this experiment in the human hepatoma cells they were uh, uh, treated a, they were attached a fluorescent antibody to the asialo glycoprotein receptor okay so this is the previous year question from the csir net using frap that is fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching techniques diffusion coefficient of three integral membrane proteins m1 m2 and m3 in kidney cells is calculated as 1 micrometer per second 0.05 micrometer per second 0.005 micrometer per second so they have tagged three types of integral membrane proteins one is m1 m1 speed is 1 micrometer per second and m2 speed is 0.05 micrometer per second and m3 speed is 0.005 micrometers per second so within 1 second the m1 can move 1 micrometer within 1 second the m2 can move 0.05 micrometers within the 1 second the m3 moving 0.005 micrometer per second so here the m3 moving very slowly okay considering the fluid mosaic nature of biological membrane 
అండ్ రిలేషన్షిప్ ఆఫ్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇంటిగ్రల్ మెంబ్రెయిన్ ప్రోటీన్స్ విత్ డిఫ్యూజన్ కోఎఫిషియంట్ విచ్ ప్రోటీన్స్ విల్ హ్యావ్ ద హయ్యెస్ట్ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఇంటిగ్రల్ మెంబ్రెయిన్ డొమైన్స్ so here the domains means the integral membrane proteins will not make make up with the single type of uh, uh, alpha helix or single type of a beta helix so it contains different types of domains different uh, number of subunits will be present at one place and uh, form a integral membrane protein or a channel proteins within the cell membrane so according to their uh, diffusion coefficient they are asking to determine highest which protein having the highest integral membrane domains so if the protein complexity is more it can move slowly if the protein complexity is less it can move fastly for example if you take m1 and uh, m1 first its protein complexity is less that means which having the less number of domains so that's why it can easily move fa- easily move and it can move fastly to their maximum regions okay but if you see m2 which is slower than the uh, uh, m1 because which having the some uh, some uh, increased number of domains than the m1 but if we see m3 which is moving very slowly that is 0.005 micrometer per second so that means the m3 only having the highest number of integral membrane domains so that's why which is moving very slowly so we can uh, conclude the answer here as 3 so see here which is the very simple question to in- investigate the dynamic nature of two unrelated centrosome localized gfp tagged proteins so there are two unrelated centrosome localized proteins cent- which are present at the centrosome of chromosome okay so they are tagged with gfp green fluorescence proteins okay they are tagged with the green color fluorescence just think like that okay so which are uh, named as gfp a gfp b a team of scientist conducted fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching experiment so they have conducted frap experiment the frap profile of these two proteins is given below so observe the graph first while observing graph we need to see the x and y axis time post bleach present on the x axis so they are uh, calculating the time after the bleaching and uh, intensity of the fluorescence which is observing uh, from the y axis so just to see the gfp a so which is recovering very slowly which is, see the inte- the intensity indicate the recovery if the intensity of the fluorescence is less in the bleached area that means uh, the movement of the protein uh, unbleached proteins to this bleached region is very low okay and if you see the gf g uh, sorry gfp b so which which, uh, which having the highest intensity than the gfp a so this is we understood from the graph so let me see the options gfp b shows a faster ex- exchange rate than the gfp a so because of it is having faster exchange rate the unbleached area uh, the sorry the unbleached gfp b is re- replaced by the bleached gfp b so that's why its uh, intensity is high so the first statement is correct so if you see gfp a shows a faster exchange rate than the gfp b so we can't conclude this option because gfp b only showing the faster exchange that's why the color intensity or the fluorescence intensity is high in the gfp b okay we can remove the b option so that means from this 1 2 3 4 options we can uh, exclude the b and sorry 3 and 4 because 3 and 4 having the b option so it is incorrect so only we have 1 and 2 so if you see gfp a has more immobile fraction than the gfp b that is also correct so a and c only correct options here so the first one is uh, that means first option a and c is correct 
GFPB shows the faster exchange rate than GFPA and GFPA has more immobile fraction than the GFPB. Okay, so that's why GFPA does not showing that much intensity. So very simplest question. Lateral diffusion of proteins in membrane can be followed and diffusion rates are calculated by not atomic force microscopy, scanning electron microscope or TEM. Not because TEM and uh, SEM does not show that uh, fluorescence em em emission. So FRAP here, it can show the fluorescence emission with that. We can calculate the diffusion rates of the integral membrane proteins and its lateral diffusion rates. So, if you see FRAP, fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching is a method to estimate the diffusion of molecules in a membrane. So, with the help of FRAP, we can estimate the diffusion of molecules in a membrane. So, they have tagged the fluoro uh, four types of molecules with fluorescence. Okay, they have given one, two, three, four. So, if you see, they have given a graph the time as well as recovery first just we analyze the graph so if you analyze the graph a b c through time almost showing the same intensity through time almost showing the similar intensity so if you see b is a first showing a greater intensity a is a next showing uh, next to the b and the d showing somewhat slowly and the c so uh, sorry c showing less intensity through time so based on a b c d uh, graph plots we will match with the uh, 1 2 3 4 in the above fluorescently labeled molecules a receptor tagged with green fluorescent protein that is the one a receptor labeled with GFP which interacts with the cytoskeleton. Just remember the second one. If a protein interacted with the cytoskeleton or if a integral membrane protein uh, uh, which attached to the cytoskeleton through peripheral membrane protein, they don't move uh, that much. So they will move very slowly and in sometimes they are immobile also. So second one we can exclude completely okay second one we can exclude uh, with the, uh, i mean completely means we can't uh, match here but we can match with the c because it is showing less in intensity through time just think two as c okay so next a labeled lipid and another one is labeled protein that binds to the membrane surface okay so just think the B is 3 labeled lipid so when compared to the proteins lipids can easily move fastly so we can say that the B curve is uh, is the 3 1 3 okay is the 3 so you may get doubt the receptor also can move easily so why we want to uh, why we, we why we don't want to conclude that B as 1 but here if you see in the given combinations there is no b as one so uh, next choice is the b as three so here the b as three and a as four so the labeled protein that binds to the membrane surface also can move when compared to the uh, which move uh, less fastly when compared to the labeled lipid so here we can say the second combination is correct so you should remember another thing is that the receptor first one the receptor tagged with green fluorescent protein also can move as like a labeled lipid also okay but here uh, there is no proper combination like that so if we want to give combination like that we can give in this way so three uh, sorry the b curve is match with the three option the A curve is match with the fourth one and uh, the C curve is match with the second one because it is moving very slowly because the protein already interacted with the cytoskeleton and the D option we can uh, conclude with the one. 
so here we can change the options also but here just example i am saying okay in exams they will give questions like this so we need to identify the correct or combination here we can say that one and three match with the b also but why we are not uh, taking that option means there is no combination such combination in the options so we need to analyze each and everything while observing the experimental graphs first we want to observe what is x axis what is y axis and after that read the content they have given in the question okay so that will make easy to understand the graph as well as experiment and it will give the uh, more accuracy to answer the question so if you like this video please like share and subscribe and share to your friends also if you can't able to understand my explanation please give a comment thank you